I love using the subclavian vein for placing my central lines. It's a big site, it's tethered open with a ligament so it never collapses down during respiration. Back in the day, we had to use the landmark techniques to place that line. Notice what I did there? I said we used to. That's because today we're gonna to talk about how you can use ultrasound to place your subclavian central venous catheters. You heard? What's up everyone? Welcome back to Crit Tips. I'm so glad that you came back for another episode. And before I go on, if you enjoy this video so far, why don't you go ahead and hit that like button. If you really, really enjoy the content, hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video from me again. And before we kick it to the video, you guys, someone sent me something in the mail again. You really didn't have to, but I'm glad you did. This is always with these tough covering guys. Nope, I think I got it. Look at that. Just add water. Fits all adults. Okay, let's get some water. I got some water here. No idea what this could be. Again, with the wrapping. I don't know if this is like a Mentos and a Diet Coke thing, but nothing seems to be happening. So I'm gonna put this bad boy to the side, do the video and We'll check in with this thing on the end. Kind of like one of those cooking show things. Mm. Yeah. I love placing central lines on my patients, and I know many of you do as well. These days, we're tending to go for the internal jugular site for venous cannulation because, well, let's face it, use ultrasound and it's a safer technique. Less complications, less arterial sticks, less pneumothoraces, less through and through venopunctures. It is really the best way to do things. And if you know somebody who's placing an internal jugular central line by landmark technique, you need to smack them in the back of their head. Maybe not intra procedure or maybe not smack them at all, but, but they should know better and find them some resources, something that'll teach them that ultrasound is a better way to go. Now, while the internal jugular vein is the place to go with ultrasound, it's not without its problems. Because of its location on the neck and its access to drool, it does have a higher site of infection when you compare it to the subclavian vein. So it can get more infections as compared to a subclavian line. The other problem with the internal jugular is that it's at a slightly increased risk of getting deep vein thromboses. While it's a nice access site because you can use ultrasound, it does have a slightly higher complication rate when you compare it to the subclavian vein. On the other hand, the subclavian site is a wonderful place to put your central line. It's a much cleaner site than the neck. It has less risk of DVT. The one problem with it is that you have to place it blind or using a landmark technique, and that's fraught with complications. You might puncture the artery, or even worse, you might cause a pneumothorax. Well, why not use ultrasound to place your subclavian lines? I've heard a lot of people who have said that clavicle gets in the way and it makes it difficult to do ultrasound. But the truth is, there have been lots of studies that have looked at this and it turns out the subclavian site using ultrasound is something that is very easy and accessible to do. It doesn't require years and years of ultrasound training. Even people who are new to the ultrasound game can learn how to do this and today, I wanna show you how to do that procedure. Now, here's my disclaimer. I've been doing this for several years now, and I do not advise that you go out and do this on your very next line. In fact, all the stuff that we talk here about on Crit Tips is just for educational purposes. It's not really advice, and anything that you do is really your responsibility. I'm just showing you what I do in my practice and some better ways to take care of patients, but ultimately, it's up to you. If this is a technique that you are really into and really wanna learn, I suggest that you do this in a simulation center a few times first and even just look with ultrasound on your patients before even wielding a needle and trying to do this at home. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's do a little venous review. Here you have your basilic and your cephalic vein and they come up and they join into the axillary vein. This axillary vein courses here from your shoulder underneath the clavicle and becomes the subclavian vein that dips down into your SVC and into your heart. The really cool thing about this procedure is that you don't even have to go over the subclavian venous site if you can 
identify the axillary vein really far out. And I like this procedure for people who I don't want to take a chance on a pneumothorax. I'll start way distal, and if I have a good axillary target that I can puncture, I'll go ahead and cannulate them there. It's still a deep vein at that point, and then I can just direct my catheter all the way down to where the tip is at the junction of the SVC and the right atrium where central line should be placed. So here's how we're going to do the procedure. But first, I need a kind of ultrasound probe type thing. Hang on. Imagine, if you will, this MacBook Pro brick right here is my ultrasound probe. Obviously, we're going to be using the linear probe as we do for any vascular access because the linear array of crystals is going to allow us to put the vein in long axis, and this is going to be the key to doing that procedure. We're going to have the marker, imagine if you will, it's up here, and we're going to plop and drop right here on the anterior shoulder. I say plop and drop because we're going to put it here, right there on the shoulder, and then we're going to drop it down just a centimeter or two until we see the axillary vein and the axillary artery there on our screen. Both of these might be pulsatile, so it can be difficult to tell what's what. So we're going to rely on pulse wave Doppler to tell us the difference between the artery and the vein. With the pulse wave Doppler, you have that little sample volume that's sitting there that you can put over each vessel and then run your Doppler waves. If you have an arterial waveform, it's gonna give you the spike. And if you have a venous flow, it should be more of a continuous, low velocity flow that goes You've all seen that before, and my sound effects are pretty terrible. Now, once you plop the probe on the shoulder and drop it down a couple centimeters, you're gonna look for your target. If your venous target, your axillary vein here, is nice and big, well, go for it try to cannulate at this point. If it's not, and usually it's not that big, you're gonna to have to start moving more medial. And as you move more medial towards the sternum on the chest, what you'll find is that that vein that you've identified as the axillary vein will slowly get bigger and bigger. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna follow that vein in and we're gonna go infraclavicular under the clavicle with this probe until we get to the point where that subclavian vein ducks under the clavicle and then we're gonna move that probe just out one centimeter or two so we see it nice and round or oval in that short axis view. Look at the clip that's on the screen here. What you'll notice and hopefully have an appreciation for now is just how close that subclavian vein is to the pleural line of that lung. It's so close. It just gives me pause that whenever I need to place a line, ultrasound is totally the way I should be doing this. Here's the key to the entire procedure. And I say this to my trainees, I say this to attendings who I meet who really want to do this technique. You should never, ever, under any circumstances, did I say never, never do this on the cross section or short axis view. No matter how good you are at putting the needle in and following it down in a stepwise approach to its target, you can never be sure that you're looking at the needle tip and not the shaft. Now when you do this with the IJ, you try not to backwall the vein, but if you backwall the veins, you pull back and you continue with your procedure. If you backwall the subclavian vein, you cause a pneumothorax and now you cause complications. The whole reason why you're doing this procedure is so that you don't cause complications. So what I'm trying to tell you is you want to rotate the probe 90 degrees and we are going to cannulate this vein in the long axis. I have never and never will cannulate this in the short axis because when you use the long axis, you will put the needle in from here and you're going to direct it in plane with the ultrasound crystals and you'll see the entire tip and shaft of that needle going into the vessel, greatly reducing your chances of backwalling that vein, greatly reducing your chance of causing a pneumothorax. Always remember, when you're doing this procedure, it's in the long axis or the in-plane view of that vein. We went through a lot, just to review this again. We're going to plop on the shoulder and drop down a centimeter or two. You're going to find your axillary vein, your axillary artery, and if your axillary vein is big and patent enough, you can try and cannulate and do your central line procedure from out there. Less risk of complications when you're doing it that far out. If you can't, you're going to start moving it in medially until you find a target that's big enough. And when you do, you're going to take the probe, turn it 90 degrees to get the in-plane view, and then bring your needle in laterally and watch it go in-plane into the vein. Now, even though the chance of getting a pneumothorax is extremely small doing this technique, I still bring the ultrasound probe over when I'm done with this procedure and make sure that there's lung sliding on both sides, just like we talked about in episode seven. Wait, 
You haven't watched episode seven? Oh, that's probably because you haven't subscribed to the channel. Subscribe to the channel. So for me, in 2020, all my central lines are placed using the subclavian vein under direct visualization with ultrasound, unless there's some strong indication why I shouldn't be doing that procedure. I get the benefits of using ultrasound and I get the benefits of a superior site that is cleaner than the IJ and less risk of deep vein thrombosis. I just wanna say again, if you've never done this technique before, tomorrow on the next patient you have is not the time to start learning this. Tomorrow, if you wanna go to your patients, take the ultrasound and just look at the anatomy of that subclavian vein. But then on a phantom or a gel simulator, practice doing the cannulation. And if you've never done the in-plane view, it is slightly trickier than the cross-sectional approach to venous cannulation, but it's certainly not something I would say is hard. It just requires a little extra practice and a steady hand. It's in fact the way I do most of my nerve blocks and a lot of my other vascular access procedures. And that wraps up another episode of Crit Tips. Did you like it? I hope you did. If you did, show some love, hit that like button. And if you really enjoyed it and wanna see more, you wanna see more, subscribe to our channel because we have a lot more content coming out. Oh, and uh, Smith, Mr. or Mrs., um, it still looks like this. I don't know when I should expect to see something, but mama always told me it's the thought that counts. So thank you for this wonderful white disc that will sit in this water for some amount of time until something where nothing happens. Thank you. So I hope to see you again in the not so distant future. And until we meet again, you stay awesome. Please do. I mean, what does this thing do? Not even a clue on this thing, what this does. It's just put in some water and we'll see what happens. I mean, it's going to sit on the desk in water for probably weeks until the water evaporates. It's just how I operate.